So this is a video tutorial for my friend Sumio. Uh, Sumio, I think you're a very talented artist and musician, and I have a feeling that if you learn logic, um, that you're going to produce all kinds of amazing music. And so this is just a very fundamental start with, um, with logic. So what you do is... Um, go to logic and in the upper left corner file new and usually when you start out new it will bring up this dialog box um, but if it doesn't and it looks like this um, it might give you these choices so I would just say new empty project. Um, later you can start trying these other sort of starting templates that they have or starting modes that they have. But I like empty because it's just this will teach you how to sort of create the tracks that you want. So start with empty and uh, it's going to ask you to start out making at least one track so you're just making an available track by choosing software instrument. If you are going to record your voice or a real guitar or a real violin or any instrument, you'd use audio. Um, but for most of the purposes of these video tutorials, I'm going to just use software instrument for MIDI included sounds that come with Logic. So you're using your MIDI keyboard and the sounds that are part of this program. So you choose create and that will make one track. Notice that you could tell it to suddenly make several tracks right here. Um, so I'm gonna for now just create one track. And there it is. It starts out with a default of a classic electric piano sound. Uh, let's see, I gotta adjust some drop volumes. <clears throat> okay, so there's the internal sound. I'm just playing notes on a MIDI keyboard. Okay, so um, it defaulted to this sound, but if you wanted to start out like loading some other sound, you could just keep this track and go over to the instrument choice, which is this button right here, and it has a little up-down arrow. So you choose that, and you can choose these different instrument sources. Or another way is you can go over here. This is probably easier for starting out. And you could just um, start out with some choices. So I'm just going to try like drum kit for now. And I'm going to try Detroit Garage. And now it's loaded that drum kit. And if I hit notes, Okay, the, low, the notes for these uh, drum sounds are much lower down on the keyboard, in the bass notes of the keyboard, so um, let's see. Um, notice that you have a tempo up here of 120, and if you were to start just playing sound, because nothing is recorded, it should hear, we should hear a metronome. If we don't, we can turn it on over here. There's the metronome, and usually it's good to to play ideas to that. But actually, the way this is set up is that once you start recording, and by the way, you can always bring it back to the beginning with this, the beginning of the linear line. So um, once you start recording, which is this button, you'll you should hear the metronome like this. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to rewind it back to the beginning. And now I'm going to go over to the keyboard. And first I want to just find like what notes are making what sounds before I start recording. So hold on one second.
kind of not that loud, so it's hard for me to hear the drum sounds. Okay. So I'm going to just start playing around on some of the drum sounds on the notes of the keyboard after I press record right here just for a little bit um, so that you can hear what I'm recording. Okay, so right away, um, the way that that plays um, And I didn't play it exactly perfect timing, so when I again when I play back, I'm gonna put this metronome on. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this back to the beginning. You can move these parts all around, and it's very flexible. And over here, you can stretch out your view of this. So I'm going to stretch it a little wider and I'm going to stretch it a little uh, taller. Whoops, didn't mean to go that tall. And by the way, uh, well I, I'll go into the MIDI notes later, but for now the first thing I want to do is quantize this because I want to make it really even and perfect sounding. Um, so I'm going to go to quantize over here and I'm going to put it, uh, I think this is good enough if I quantize it to 8th notes. I don't think it really needs 16th, because my hi-hat that I was playing was kind of like 1 and 2 and 1, you know what I mean? So I'm going to just go to 8th notes, and when I click it, watch the bar, the bar of the Detroit Garage. You see it shifts slightly, and that's because now it should be perfect timing. Listen to this. So, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another track. Um, so, for example, let's put on a bass sound. So I'm going to press plus sign for a new track. We want it to be on software instrument because we're going to use the keyboard to play the, the logic sounds. Create. And once again, I'm going to go over to the left and I'm going to hit a di different sound. And I'm going to try Liverpool bass. And now I'm going to uh, go test the sound. Okay, so now I'm going to play a bass part over this. And notice, like, if I wanted to slow everything down, I could just go up to the tempo up here and you could either double click in it and type a number like a lower number to make it slower or a higher number to make it faster or come out of it again or you can click the left click your mouse on it and just pull your mouse down and you start to see the numbers drop so let's see let's see how fast does this sound Okay, so now when I record, notice that the track that is highlighted, you know, the lighter shade than the other tracks, that's the track that you're about to record on. And when you play the keyboard, that, ha that tells you what sound is on this track. If I clicked this track and I play the keyboard, then I'd hear that sound. So I'm going to click on this track that has the bass. And, in fact, I'm going to bring this track up here. I'm going to just bring it out a little lot farther so that I have time to get to the keyboard and be ready to play. So, I'm, gonna, I'm, I, I'm going to record on this track. I hit the record button.
play it back, first of all, I could bring these back to one, but I'm just going to have the starting point be here for now. And um, once again, I just want to make my bass line a little more perfect than it is. It sounds like this live. Actually, you know, sometimes you like it to just be live and not quantized because you don't want it to be too machine-like, but in this case I would like to, so um, I'm going to um, make sure that you you're, you clicked on this, this or the part like this is what you're going to quantize. If I had it clicked on this and I went to quantize, then I'd be quantizing the drum track. If I have it clicked on this, I'll be quantizing the bass part. And I had more than eighth notes in there, more like sixteenth. So let's just see what does that sound like now. Okay, so that's perfect. It's just the way I'd like it. And um, why don't we put on just one more sound just to demonstrate this thing about the multi-track recording. And, um, and then we'll do some other things with that. So um, before I continue, I think that I should really go in here and save this, um, this project. I really should have done it from the very beginning. And I want to point out some things about saving. So when I come up here to File, Save. Um, or save as. Let's use save as. And I want to come to my desktop actually, so let's see. I think I made a, a Sumio folder. There we go. Um, now here's the thing to understand about when you're saving. Um, first of all, make sure that this is not as a package. Make sure that it's as folder. And the reason for that is you want to start seeing some folder structures come within your song project. And so this very first thing that comes up here that says like project.logicx, that's actually going to become a folder. Okay, that's one thing I got confused about and I started making folders inside folders that didn't need to be there. So this is the main folder. So actually within this Sumio folder, I'm going to put the logic folder, the, the main logic folder. So I'm going to call it Sumio. And I personally like to um, put something like multi at the end so it reminds me that this is like the multi-track version of this song or this file and um, it wouldn't be bad to put you know uh, Sumio just for finding this easier and this tags later and then um, like I said just make sure that this is folder and not package so that it's going to create a structure of folders and then you save Okay, and then here you see is the title of your uh, folder and the whole project and everything that's going to happen within it. So um, we've saved that. We have a starting bass uh, drum part and bass line. And we also have, um, I'm going to make a third track just to further demonstrate adding on one more sound. Um, but before I do that, Let's come up here to these visual adjustments and let's make it much shorter and a little bit thinner, like less tall, okay? Now, since those two parts were kind of what I consider very repetitive parts, like ones that could repeat really many, quite a lot of times, I'm going to just... Um, I'm going to highlight them both and, and duplicate them, but just to demonstrate only duplicating one, when you hold down your Option key, 
um, on your on your keyboard, I mean your um, typing keyboard for the Mac, you hold that down while you left click on the part and that's going to duplicate it and you can click and drag it. Now if I just go over, here's a quick way to select all of this. I can select all of this together and do the same thing and duplicate that or to select everything that's on this row right here you can just click on the main uh, tra track itself and that selects everything that's on this track and once I've got them both selected which you can see visually I press option key on my typing keyboard and drag them now if I wanted to go for a really long time on this, um, there's probably you know more efficient ways to do all this, but I like to really manually do it and drag the parts exactly as long as I want to do it, you know, the song. So I'm gonna I, again, I could highlight them like that, or I can just click on this, and you'll notice that every time I click Option key and then duplicate them and click and drag, that it gets easier and easier to make a really long song because you know it's it's like uh, I guess it's like um, cells dividing you know what I mean and multiplying so there now that's many tracks now you know I could have done both of those together and so just to demonstrate that I'm gonna delete I just clicked and highlight those and I'm pressing delete um, but I still have the beginning ones um, at the beginning of the whole song. So, um, and just to remind you, these are actually those whole parts that I played. I've just made them visually look like they're just little boxes. So, one another thing you can do is you can just highlight them both like that. And you can multiply parts two tracks at a time or several tracks at a time. Alright, so I'm sure that's plenty. That probably is more than enough for this demonstration. So now what we have when we play it back Okay, so, you know, that basically is going to repeat over and over. Um, and so now I'm going to make one more track of like some kind of keyboard part. And uh, let's see what choices do we have here. So many choices. Alright, I'm going to try this vintage clav. That sounds fun. 70s funk clav. And I'm going to go over and to the keyboard and just try it first to see what am I dealing with. So, uh, once again, I'm going to start from the beginning, just record a few rounds of that. quantizing if I do any it, it, it might have to be more like 32 notes let's see if that if it can handle that no that, I don't like the way that quantize it I'm gonna turn it off the quantize and I'm gonna try putting it on 16th notes and see if that's a little better So then basically I could, um, you know, 
I could start um, you know multiplying this track as well so I'm going to do that just quickly I highlight it, I press option on the keypad, drag them out and actually I mean this is probably going to be way more than enough for the pur demo purpose so I'm going to just erase this ending part of the, the song and um, now another thing that you might want to play with is um, kind of panning sounds a little bit here and there. Um, and when I say that, what I mean is moving a sound a little more so that it's a little offset, not centered, but a little bit off to the left. And there's there's two ways to do this. Um, and I'm, I'm going to solo this part right now by pressing S so that we don't hear all these other things. And when it plays back, I'd like to take off the metronome, so I'm going to turn that off. So I'm going to try panning that a little bit to the left here. So this is, right here is the, tr the track itself, and you can adjust the volume of this individual track with this. Over here, this is the master volume of all the tracks playing back at once. So the left side is your individual track that you're on that's lightly high shaded here. And the right track is all of your tracks um, when you unsolo this and you play them back all together. Um, so there's a master volume here and then there's your individual instrument volume. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to bring that volume down slightly. And I'm going to try, this is the panning position, like how far right or left or center. Right now it's exactly center. So I'm going to try moving it a little bit like to the left. And you'll, you should probably hear that when I play it back. If I brought it more. Now, um, I highly recommend that when you pan parts, that instead of using this panning knob, that you use um, an effect, and under the clav, um, the the little buttons that fall right under it, which you can actually create more of. Um, I'm trying to let's see if I can show you. I'm going to click right under it. See how this turns? When I hover over it, it turns to like a dark color. So when it turns dark, I can click it and add another. Um, effect. Okay, so this is where effects can be added to your individual track. In this case, the clav keyboard track. And you see how it says imaging? I love this direction mixer. I'm gonna uh, go all the way to choosing the word stereo. And um, now this is, think of this as like a higher quality pan panning button. To me, uh, to my ears, the the panning like the stereo image is much higher retained when you pan with this so I'm gonna try it like a little bit off like that and notice that when I use this I want this to definitely be centered like what it is default because you're only affecting the panning position from over here so when I play this back it off a little bit to the right using the direction mixer. Um, when you have effects on here, you can mute them by hovering over to the left to that little button. And when you press that, it keeps the effect there, but it's off. So right now, if I played it back, that's centered. And this is panned. It's a little bit to the right using this effect of the direct mixer. Now, just to get a little more fun and show something else you can do in these effects areas, I'm going to hover down so that 
below it so there's that little thin darker line left click it choose delay stereo delay and I recommend that delays you start out like trying to keep them very soft so they're not there's not too much of an effect so here's sort of the volume and there's a lot more things you could play here play with here like right now it's set to certain speed and and rhythm and uh, frequency but I'm just gonna use its default and listen to what happens to the sound now So you can get a lot of fun effects just from delay is great. And then another main effect that I would say that you should consider is um, reverb. And uh, do not overuse reverb, but let's take an example on drums. I'm going to go to drums track. I'm actually going to solo this track, so all we hear is the drums right now. And here's playing it dry. dry sound. Oh, and here's something to keep in mind. Always keep your drums, like if it's a drum set, always keep that centered. Don't pan that and with a direction mixer or anything else, unless you're really mixing like two sets of percussion and panning those off from each other. And with bass, always keep bass right in the center. That's like a real standard uh, recording rule. Okay, so um, um, with this drum sound, um, I'm not messing with any of these other effects that came with the drum sound. Like, I could turn them off. Like, if I turn them off like this, we can hear what does it sound like really raw by itself. Then when we put them back on, we can hear if there's any other effect to it. I think this was one of them. Okay, anyway, my point was that I was going to demonstrate uh, putting a little bit of reverb on. Um, and so I'm going to use that little arrow right here. I'm going to go over this compressor because I mean, I'm going to replace this compressor effect with some other effect because it, the compressor didn't really seem to be used as far as I remember. And I'm going to go to um, reverbs, and uh, you can experiment with all kinds of reverbs. There's there's uh, one that I really like a lot called Space Designer, and within this Space Designer of reverb effect, you just have so many uh, choices within it. So Right now, I'm going to go to um, fact. You come up to factory to down arrow, and let's pick um, a medium space. And I want to pick something called a plate reverb, which is kind of like a short, quick effect. And when I play play it back, see how does that sound? Now, now most, you know, a lot of reverbs that are used are sometimes a lot longer and sometimes what would be described as warmer by just um, keeping them real low um, volume when they're long. And, you know, there's choices of ones that even are, and here you'll even find options that say warm, you know, warm hall or something like that. But, um, but anyway... I'm going to use this short style one that's good for drums and sometimes it brings out a sort of punchiness about it. And actually I, th I felt like, you know, these levels that it's at, like if I emphasize it, this is way too much. Let's see. I like to really um, keep reverb quite subtle on an individual track like that. So let's see if this sounds a little better. Okay, I kind of like that effect, and you can play with these other things on this, like um, 
X stereo. I don't, I can't really tell you, I can't tell you technically what all this does, but the best thing to do is just use your ears and play around with all the different settings. Okay, now notice while I have that reverb on there, I can just X this out of the way. I don't have to keep this thing open like that. I'm just going to X it out. And on bass, I'm not going to add any kind of effect to the bass. They already have something called bass amplifier. And if you ever want to see the settings on something like this bass amplifier, you can just left click on the middle section once and you'll start to see the way you know this is set and you also can even start changing things and testing out what are different sounds when you start changing or choosing other things on it so you'll notice it even has all these presets you know kinda cool actually um, so there's so much to it but anyway I'm not going to mess with those, I'm just keep them as they are. And oh yeah, and I forgot to unsolo this. So when I press S, it um, brings back all the sounds so you can hear everything. And, you know, I can't help but to want to just add some kind of like pad um, type synthesizer sound just sort of soaring to like an opposite side from this funky clav. So the funky clav is like, you know, sitting a little bit off to the, if we look at the direction mixer, it's slightly off to the right. We could make it even a little more to the right if we want. But I'm going to add one more software instrument just for the fun of it. And I'm going to use Synthesizer. I'm going to look for pad sounds. And let's try... There's so many choices. You could just like get lost, like never even discovering every single sound there is. It's amazing. Um, so I'm going to see what is calming waves sound like. Hold on. <laughs> Like that. I want to try something um, a little bit different. Ooh, I kind of like that. And you know, one rule that can help you out with recording on Logic um, with your overall mix when it comes to the end, mixing it all together and exporting a final file of it. Something that will really help out a lot is when you record, start out real low, like minus 12 on everything. Um, so technically I could have done that for this sound, the drums, I could have had that way down. I'm going to bring it down to about minus 3 bass. You never want bass to be too loud. Um, okay, so now I'm going to record this uh, synth part. Um, I'm gonna just wait a little bit before I come in. Now I could just wait through this first part or I could bring the cursor up to where I'm gonna start recording. So when I press record it's gonna bring, when I press play or press record it'll start me closer to the point where I'm gonna be recording. So like this for example. <laughs> By the way, you can hit the space bar on your type typing keypad um, to stop. It's very convenient. It's like a real record button. You tell it to stop. Okay, so um, those, I don't really have to quantize them, but I'll just quantize them to eighth notes. And the other thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to 
press Option and click and drag this, but I'm going to bring it sort of spacious like that so I leave a little bit of space where there's nothing happening. And um, then that'll be sort of the whole thing. Now, lastly, say that I solo the clav and um, the ambient synth sound. Now, you can point the, uh, the mouse arrow up into this area where these numbers are, and you can highlight a part that you want to listen back to like repeatedly. So I just did that. And what this does is if, I, is if I'm listening back and I want to keep on listening to that like over and over, I just press play. And because I've highlighted this, it's gonna it's gonna keep on uh, cycling through this part. So what I'm going to do now, just to give it some depth and balance, I'm going to put that direction mixer, the one that I like to use for panning, over here. So I hover under the different effects, and I left click the mouse right under that, and I choose imaging, direction mixer, stereo. And remember the clab was going off a little bit to the right? Well, I'm going to bring this ambient sound a little bit to the left. And now the balance between those two is like this. And then when we unsolo these by turning these S off and to, and then I have to click on this to turn this little loop looping thing off. Together they sound like this. Now, um, so far, when I listen back, there's a few things that I hear in the mix, and this is just where you have to practice, like, whatever you're listening, you know, your, whatever your taste is for how you hear stuff, you just have to adjust it accordingly. There's a few things I'm hearing, mainly that the drums, for my taste, are way too soft. So I'm going to bring those, those drums, I, I clicked on it so that I'm on this track, that's what the volume I'm adjusting, and bring it much louder. I could bring it as far up as zero, I don't want to go above zero, okay? But I'm going to bring it at least significantly higher. Um, the bass, I think, I think I could bring it, leave it almost right where it is, I'm going to bring it down slightly. Um, the, the ambient sound in my for my taste, should definitely be way softer. It just got too overpowering, so I'm bringing that down. And let's see how is that. I can just click the cursor to different parts here, just where I start. So. And now the Basically, the clav to me sounds like it's almost like the overpowering instrument. So I just want to. This is all up to your taste and your hearing. Some people will disagree with me, but I'm going to just bring the clav slightly down. Once again, I've 
kind of find the clav is a little bit too high, so I'm just bring it down a little more. I actually went a little bit too low on the ambient sound for my taste, so I'm just going to bring it up slightly. Come back to here. Last little thing I'd like to do to the drum kit is go to the space designer right here, left click in the middle to open it up, and actually I want to put a slight more amount of that um, plate reverb on it, and it sound like this. I'm going to make the drum a little bit louder. Remember the beats per minute up here? I could bring that back up to what it was originally, or any any tempo really, after the fact, after already recording. That's what's so cool about MIDI is that you, you can adjust it to any tempo. And honestly, I hate this song at that tempo, so I love it at back at 90, I think it was, right? Okay, so um, now I'm going to just go over when you set, export it out to be a final file.